Hey, good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to be with you today. And let me see if I can share my screen with you. Okay, perfect. I think you can see my presentation now. We can. Looks good. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Good. So um, again, it's a pleasure to be with all of you today. And what we'll do is talk a little bit about from a Danos perspective, how technology is influencing the energy careers that we have at our organization. And what I'll say is the presenters before me actually um, set the stage really well for what I'll talk about today. And there was some description of, you know, the, the actual work, the hands-on work that goes into building structures and operating different facilities. And I would say that our workforce is primarily the boots on the ground who does that work. So um, it's, it's just exciting to be able to share that with you. And what I'll say is that um, I'll, I'll maybe bring an interesting perspective because I actually, I worked for 10 years as the, um, the bio was introduced in a maritime business, um, actually doing HR work. And then I took a break and went back to college and I got my degree in business education. And I taught high school juniors and seniors for a year before starting my time at Danos. So what I learned during that time definitely is um, a real healthy respect for what all of you do as educators. And I admire um, the influence that you have on the students and the direction that they will take. And um, what was interesting for me is when I moved over to Danos after teaching for about a year, Danos is in the community that I was teaching. So some of the students that were in my classes actually ended up applying for Danos. And in my role as human resources, I was able to see the, the full transition, if you will, from high school into the workforce. So that was just an interesting perspective that I'm not sure that many um, people get to experience. And what I wanna open up with is, I mentioned the power of influence. And for, for me, when you think about the role that you all play, it's so important in shaping that talent pipeline for those of us who work in the industry. And you really are planting seeds. And um, so hopefully today you're being uh, provided with some insight into the energy sector and, and opportunities in the oil and gas business. And, you know, for me, I think it's very important, and I'm sure you all are doing this, sharing with students what they can do as opposed to what they can't do. And, um, you know, so hopefully we're giving you some information that will just help you in delivering those messages. And what I'll start with is before I, I get into details of what Danos does, I wanted to give you some insight into why we exist as a company and why we do the things that we do. So our company purpose is to honor God, develop great people to solve big challenges for our customers and communities. And we're, um, it's a family owned business and the third generation owners wanted to create a purpose for them leading the business and being at work that was greater than creating shareholder value for them. So our purpose statement is really intended to be inspirational. Um, and most of our, all of our employees have really embraced this. We've gotten really good feedback from our customers about the purpose statement. It's unique in our industry, but it really is inspirational for us. And then the other thing that really drives us that is aspirational, aspirational in nature is our vision. And this is to become the standard of operational excellence and customer service by which every company in our industry is measured. And what we wanted to do, we didn't want to just settle on um, being good. We really want to try to be great. So we, we, we continue to strive for this every day. And it's a goal that we set for ourselves and we continue to work toward that. So this is what we do as an organization. It just highlights the slide indicates the company was founded in 1947 and, and has been family owned since that time. And this, to the left, you see a list of the integrated services that we provide. And many of the, um, the structures that you saw pictures of from the other presenters, our people are working on those structures. Either they were um, helping to build the structures in a fabrication yard, 
or they're doing some installation of some of those structures. We have people who are operating platforms and doing a, a whole host of activities and support to, um, to our customers who work in this industry. And you'll see that we have about 2,000 employees with eight office locations. And for us, because we're deploying primarily people and services, we track man hours. So we had nearly 9 million man hours in 2019. So that's a little bit uh, insight into what we do as an organization. So today what we'll do is we'll, co we'll cover three discussion points. We'll talk about how we're applying technologies in the field to solve our customer challenges. We're also talking about how we're developing a competent workforce through the use of technology and finally preparing the next generation workers by utilizing technology. And the first example I'll give you, I'll give you a few examples how with, with boots on the ground, how our people are using technology to solve customer problems. So in this case, what you see is we have a codings group and this group um, was able to use a robotic ultra high pressure water blasting system. So if you think about this, this is really um, a, a really cool tool that our operator was able to use. And the challenge that our customer had, they had to perform coatings maintenance to a tank roof without sandblasting dust and overspray mist um, going into the neighboring properties. It was a residential, near a residential area. So our operator was able to deploy this technology and it helped to eliminate the dust reduce waste and reduce the personnel exposure to the hazardous areas. And this actual little robot will employ 40,000 pound PSI of water to remove the existing coating from the tank roof surface. And it collects the water and debris and it's able to um, safely dispose of that. So that's just one example of how our people with boots on the ground are able to use technology. The next example is we're able to use scaffold designer software. And this is where our people are using a, a new 3D design software technology for complex bidding. And what we're able to do is to provide the client with really a visual interpretation of what that scaffolding design will look like on their structure. And without, um, we're able to then determine what are the material needs, what are the man hour needs, and we're able to provide this to our customers so that they could submit it to their engineering group to get approval for it before we actually begin to deploy people and material out on the job site. So this is a really good tool when we are um, needing to go offshore and um, create this type of scaffolding to, to accomplish work. And then some additional technologies uh, we're able to use our, um, a sparkless grinder. If you think about being in a hazardous environment where um, creating sparks could be dangerous, we're able to use things like sparkless grinders and they use uh, water injection to eliminate the sparks that's generated from the friction of the tool. And then the other thing we're able to use is called, it's a little bit of a tongue twister, a backpack blaster. And back in the day when there was blasting work being done, it would really require um, huge pieces of equipment with sand pots and air compressor compressors that are really stationary. So our people are able to actually um, work on pipelines and have a little bit more flexibility and maneuverability as they need to get into small spaces to do this kind of work. And then the next one I wanted to share with you is what we're doing in the space of competency and training. And what you see here is a gas compressor simulation, simulation startup and loading. And we were able to, with a collaborative effort with our technology partner, we developed a state-of-the-art interactive virtual offshore platform that's designed to measure certain competencies. And what happens is our, our learner or the user could be immersed in what it would actually be like to be in the offshore environment. And if you think about, um, this is really important today, particularly because of what's going on with COVID, we have POB issues, personnel on board. So what happens is traditionally, we used to send um, competency assessors offshore 
who would observe our workers doing this to um, make sure and test their competencies. Because what we need to do is to make sure that the theories that, that they've learned and, and that they're applying them appropriately in the workplace. So we're able to actually set them up with VR goggles and they can do this interactive learning where they would demonstrate that they um, are able to apply the, the actual knowledge that they learned in the classroom on actual equipment. And so this eliminates the need to send um, competency assessors offshore. And what we can do is we um, collect this data and we put it into a competency management system and we're able to identify gaps and um, apply whatever additional learnings that we need to apply with our employees. The next thing that we have are, um, in the space of technology and competency and training is course development software. And what we wanna do is make sure that all of our employees are trained properly and they, they understand and they can perform their um, assigned duties. And so we have um, different tools available to us. We can uh, modify this software. We can actually change um, the voices. We can change the images that they see. We can also um, it include some interactive things for them to actually have to react to and make decisions. And really what happens is we can measure the results. We can analyze that against their peers and identify, again, any gaps that we need to identify with respect to training. And then this next slide, um, it's uh, virtual components and simulations. And what happens here, our virtual offshore platform features all the major in, uh, components and equipment that are out on the job site. So our people would be um, servicing these, um, these different types of equipment. And what you'll see here is a, a safety device panel, um, a wellhead, and also an oil and gas scrubber. And what the scrubber does is it removes the um, dirt, water, and foreign matter um, or undesired liquids that are a part of the gas flow stream. And what you see here is actually a, gly a glycol dehydration unit. And this is what removes water from the natural gas um, and the natural gas liquids. Um, so you can see that, that really the, um, the thing that we're able to provide our um, employees and the learner in this experience is actually better than what they would experience offshore because in the offshore environment, they can't actually see the flow of the liquids in these different types of equipment. So this gives the, um, the employee actually a better experience to actually see how the equipment flows. And then we have actually an internship program that we have partnered with a customer and we've piloted that program and, and we have a video in just a moment that'll highlight the successes that we have there. But we've identified a few internship program objectives and um, I'll start at the top. And one of our objectives is really to accelerate the in-demand skill development with on-the-job learning. And our intern will actually be partnered with a mentor in the offshore environment. And this will be an experienced worker who will really take a learning roadmap with the intern and help them to navigate and work through that learning roadmap, primarily over a six month time frame. It also gives the intern an opportunity to increase personal development. We all know that unless uh, people are willing to work with and for you, then technical competence will not be able to overcome a lack of in, um, personal development. So we have incorporated in our learning roadmap where people will work on those personal development skills by using our company values and what we call our high performance culture trait. And then the other thing is our learner and our intern is able to acquire work experience to be considered for job placement upon completion. Um, oftentimes, we had a history where we were not able to place people because they didn't have relevant job experience. So this internship program, which is a paid program, is able to provide them with some really, um, some hands-on experience in the environment that they would actually be working in. And then we're also able to create a more inclusive and diverse workforce. It gives a path of um, entry point and also a path of progress progression to, um, to have a more diverse workforce. 
And then lastly, um, I'll highlight the objective is su to support the communities and schools. And we've partnered with our um, local community colleges and um, we really have been able to connect the dots with um, the community colleges, our customers, and our organization uh, to help provide a path for employees. And what I'll say about the internship program and really our jobs overall is that employees can really live almost anywhere because our jobs, most of the jobs are actually offshore. And this will be either um, on the shelf properties or in deep water. And this means that, um, you know, our employees will work on a rotational schedule, which will be, you know, sometimes 14 and seven or 14 and 14. Um, nowadays, because of COVID, they're actually staying out for 21 days. And they have the opportunity to um, earn overtime as well, every single hitch that they work. So it's really a, a viable career opportunity um, that folks can, can live anywhere. They just need to be able to make it to crew chain which will you know, be somewhere uh, either in um, Texas or Louisiana. And then what I wanna highlight for you here is um, a partnership that we have with um, one of our customers, which is DHP, and um, we'll, we'll uh, feature the internship program. So you'll hear some of the success or really from the voices of the interns about their experience. It started when we were doing some recruiting several years ago and looking at the available workforce and those that were applying for the vacant roles we had in our offshore facilities. The theme was became very apparent, a theme around skill set, a theme of diversity and those that were available to us to even interview. We targeted improving opportunities for those, offering education, educating our workforce to account for the demands of the future, and changing who's available to us to supply our, our needs. To do that, we, we looked at the community, what's the community that we operate look like, and so we kind of set that as a goal. We, we then met with community leaders, we met with the local educational institutions to see what was available to us, what are the programs like, and from there it, it kind of stemmed into what we now call our internship program. Our first interns went offshore in January of 18. Nine have completed the course and with one of the nine, Bailey was hired as our, our first female operator in the Gulf of Mexico. It gives us a chance to get experience, which is what most companies are looking for. There are opportunities just because right now I'm the only female out there. And I wouldn't go for oil and gas because it was a it was a nice program and I liked it because everything that we did we had hands on. It's like a once in a lifetime opportunity to be able to be part of something this big. It doesn't matter uh, where you're from or who you are, it matters what you can bring to the table. So there seems to be a growing uh, interest from customers in talking about diversity and inclusion. And um, there's more attention uh, being placed on it. And uh, customers have sought us out as a leader in our industry to help them to shape what that looks like. So we're working with another major operator and piloting a program. And we're in the process of placing uh, interns with them currently. So we're looking forward to expanding on what we've done with BHP. For us, our company vision is to set the standard of operational excellence by which every company in our industry is measured. So that vision statement compels us to, uh, to take the lead on this. And we also feel like we need to uh, be focusing on what does the workforce of the future look like? How are we building those talent pipelines so that we can best serve our customers and create solutions for them? Diversity of thought is key to success. Developing the culture around transparent diversity has set the stage for true diversity and bring in more, more thought, different type thoughts to the table. So really uh, wanted to highlight what we've been able to accomplish with DHP and we also are talking to other customers, uh, major operators who are interested in having us deploy interns on their assets. So we're excited about the possibilities and growing what we're doing in that space.
And then the critical partnerships for us in creating the talent pipeline really start with you all, uh, middle and high schools, uh, because you are really in a position of influence for uh, our future workforce and, um, you know, the, 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 the things that you do for them um, certainly influence the path and the direction that they take. And then also the community colleges and universities, we uh, are engaged with community colleges and we uh, actually are able to place students who are enrolled in their various programs that they have. And we also have a staff internship program where we're able to partner with our universities to uh, place people in our office as well. We are exploring military outreach and we feel like that's an important also connection for our talent pipeline in transitioning folks who are looking to enter civilian life. They certainly have transferable skills that would be of great value at Danos. And then community workforce development. There are certainly, we believe, people who want to return to our industry or maybe want to take a shift in direction in their careers. So we are definitely exploring possibilities here on the community workforce development. Our customers are really critical as well because we are working to serve them on their assets and their different properties. So they are a partnership, a critical partner for us and also other industry leaders like we have partnered with presenters today and all of these things together really um, work in, in concert to create that future talent pipeline for our industry. So just as a, a quick recap, we talked about how we, uh, with respect to technology, we're using it to solve customer challenges. We're leveraging technology to develop our workforce. And then we're also uh, using it through our internship program and preparing the next generation of workers. And then I'll close with the power of influence. Again, you have the seeds to plant and uh, that's the image on the left. And on the right is our, an image of our headquarters and it's surrounded by very mature, large, beautiful oak trees. So if you think about what happened by all of those critical partners working together, you know, when the seeds are planted then we can develop, I'll just use the analogy of these big mature and beautiful trees that serves us all well. So anyways, that's the presentation and thank you so much.